patients. These past 10 days certainly have been traumatic for thousands of people in Napa and Sonoma counties who've lost everything, and also for many more who've just been watching the fires unfold. Yeah, experts say it's important for people to recognize the effects of grief and trauma after a disaster like this. For more, we are joined live in studio by psychologist Dr. Dan Peters. Dan, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Um, Let's start with the individual who's just speechless right now, who comes mm -hmm. to you maybe who has lost their home, everything, mm -hmm. maybe is not even insured, uh, he or she is, is leading a family. Um, what do you say to them? Well, that's, that's a really good question. I think a lot of people don't know what to say and then say a lot, which might not be that helpful. I think what we all need to do, we talked about this a little bit with the, uh, the shootings, mm -hmm. uh, we gotta ground ourselves and be present in the face of this trauma or this traumatic situation and first just listen, right? A lot of times we think we need to do something, but really we might just need to listen because these people are gonna be wanting to talk about it. They might be a little dazed. There's all these different phases of grief and trauma and coping. When we do say something, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the, um, I'm so glad you're okay. You know, um, how are you doing right now? Right, because a lot of times we, how are you doing? How is everything? How do you think I'm how do you doing? Think I lost I'm doing? everything. Exactly. Right. How are you doing right now? And then when it comes to the, a lot of people do, what, what can we do? Just tell us what we can do. Mm -hmm. That's usually not that helpful because when someone's either in shock or grief or they don't, they don't want to ask, they don't know what to ask. So you want to really ask, ask specifically, can I walk your dog? Can I get groceries? Can I fill up your car? Would you like to stay with us for Actual a few days? Actual examples. Right. Actual yeah, examples so they can choose and pick. For you. Right, yeah. right. We had an example yesterday. Our Tara Moriarty interviewed a woman who has, I think, four children, and she was looking for a playpen because her baby kept falling off the bed. Mm. We were overwhelmed in our newsroom with the response of people mm -hmm. saying, I have a playpen. Right. I can give you that playpen. So right. and, and it's hard to put the burden on the victim, if you will, to express that need. What about me as a well-meaning friend say look I love to cook can I bring you some dinners for next week absolutely. can I load up your freezer with casserole so right. is it okay to take that forward of a step absolutely and I think a lot of people uh, are appreciative and they don't have the words so definitely I would say take the step to help in tangible ways yesterday I was driving uh, and I had my young daughter in the car and she saw a fire truck she said daddy is that fire truck going to Santa Rosa mm -hmm. and, and then she started asking other questions I wasn't even aware she had been we don't let her, she's young, she, she doesn't really watch the news, she's, right. I thought she didn't care. Right, right. So my wife and I had been talking about it, they pick up on it. What they do you do. say to young children? They do, for young children, we keep it really simple. Uh, yes, it's going over there to help out, right? It's gonna be okay, right? So our young kids who are removed from it, we just wanna make them feel okay. The older kids that have more sophisticated questions, again, you know, like with the shootings, we wanna be really real and honest, but also, you know, not increase fear. We want them to feel secure, which is different than what we would tell kids who have actually experienced trauma. What about, there's, a, there's an old warrior for Golden State Warrior phrase, strength in numbers. We've seen that in the playoffs. When it comes to the victims, how important is it to connect with them and let them know they're not alone. Because in this case, there's not just two homes that burn mm -hmm. and they're by themselves and some mm -hmm. fire. I mean, these are thousands of homes. Mm -hmm. And to drive home the point that you guys need to organize and come together because if there's an insurance meeting, you guys have yeah. to, you'll, you'll be together. Right. If there's something right. about permits, you'll be together. Right. You know, and that they're not isolated by themselves. Yeah, strength in numbers is a great analogy because people need to not feel alone they need to be connected so for all of us who know people and I know a lot of us know people we want to stay in touch with them we want to connect with them and just to let them know that we're there and we're caring and they matter but that they they connect with each other Absolutely. The victims coming together as one and organizing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If I can ask you to forecast a little bit, I'll, I'll take you back to last week. I was in Santa Rosa on Tuesday where people were coming home and seeing their burned out homes for the first time. They were, there was a lot of adrenaline. There was a lot of, I'm going to fix this. We're going to move on. A week now, we see a lot of people, the reality is setting in. If you can forecast for me mm -hmm. a month, six months out, what's a sort of a normal progression Couple here? Years. Yeah. Right, right. This is going to take a while, and it's going to be varied for different people. But generally, you know, first there is, there, there tends to be a shock and denial. There's also this phase called um, heroism. Heroism, you know, you just, you're like ready to get in there, right. and we're going to make it happen. And then we're going to make some changes. And then sometimes humor comes in there. And then after a little while, the reality sets in and it can be tough right it could be your days you're overwhelmed and uh, then the loss really hits mm -hmm. um, so I, what I would say for everyone is just to know 
it's not just going to end and just going to be okay when this thing fades into the background in the news and everyone's going about in their life. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, rebuilding both emotionally, mentally, and the needs will change over time. And just know a month later when it seems okay, two months later someone can have a really hard time and that's when maybe they need to reach out and get some extra help. But time is on their side. Yes, exactly. time right. is on their side. Dr. Dan Peters, Doc, appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you so for much.